that's the title. Uh, crowdsourcing the green economy. <clears throat> I'm a baby boomer. Uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the um, post World War II uh, peace and love generation, that's me. <laughs> so, my generation and my father's generation succeeded in creating prosperity. Uh, come on. Maybe, here we go. Um, prosperity beyond your wildest dreams. And that was possible because we stood on what the industrial society really generated. And, um, well, we messed up. Turbo on. Come on. Switch on the side. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. No, the switch on the side. Here. Here. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There we go. So we messed up. We messed up <laughs> really bad. <laughs> um, we, um, actually, it doesn't really matter whether um, whether you know the details of um, how bad we messed up. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter if you uh, realize or understand what the impact of the deterioration of the environment is going to be on the lives of each of us. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Why? Because we all sit, sit in the front seats of, what's, well, of that change. <clears throat> so the challenge of your generation is at the scale of your talents. The challenge of your generation the, the, is, is like nothing really that ever came, <clears throat> ever experienced before. It's uh, the pursuit which is in front of you as, hasn't been matched. It's not, it's not building the Great Wall of China. It's not building the railroads. Uh, it's not, um, it's not uh, the, uh, the, the, the sending a man to the moon. It's not uh, decoding the human genome. <clears throat> it's not developing uh, ro uh, computational robots. It is, uh, uh, come on, here we go. It is surviving gracefully. Surviving gracefully the severe deterioration of the environment. That's the challenge of your generation. <clears throat> so um, I like what um, Saint Francis of Assisi said. Uh, here. Saint Francis of Assisi is a patron saint of animals and of the environment in the Catholic Church. And San Francisco of Assisi said, if I knew that the world would end tomorrow, I would plant an apple tree today. So I'll say that again. <clears throat> if I knew that the world would end tomorrow, I would plant an apple tree today. Uh, so let's plant apple trees. In 2008, I started Filiaco City for that very reason. Filiaco City was a blog <clears throat> on sustainability initiatives and issues in the greater Philadelphia region. And that afforded me the occasion to explore the, the green sector to attend as many sustainability-related events as I could fit in my schedule. <clears throat> and 
what I found is what I'm gonna you know, the, I'm gonna share with you my my observations and the strong trends that I I encountered. So the Philadelphia region is rich in environmental initiatives and groups. This is just a, a, a partial list. There's much more. Um, and what I observed is that there's little synergy in between all, all these people and all these initiatives. Uh, they, the different groups talk to their own audience via uh, mailing lists, newsletters, their own events. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't come together. So the coming together is what I call critical mass. Critical mass. Uh, well, here we go. Critical mass is when you have a lot of people who have the talents, the skills, the vision, the passion, and the money to put together a collective adventure successfully. And uh, so I'm going to show you a few examples of critical mass which have uh, which which have happened which are which are happening actually in the greater Philadelphia area and I will draw some of the common threads the lessons that can be useful for your generation so this is a picture of the 2011 Philadelphia naked bike ride um, the Philadelphia is one of 80 cities in the world which have a uh, naked bike ride. And I, I actually, what I'm going to talk about is not just the naked bike ride, um, really also about bicycling. Because that's happening. Um, so, in, uh, it, so in 2011, we had, uh, there were about 2,000 people who showed up, most of them naked. And, uh, <laughs> And so it's, it's, a, it's a manifesto. It's a manifesto for a simpler life, for living more in contact with the environment, for getting out of our cars, out of our bubbles of our head, which the cars is a direct extension, and be out there. And be out there totally vulnerable. And have fun. So that's actually one of the amazing aspects of the Naked Bike Ride is that it's fun and that's important because well imagine taking off your clothes and uh, riding for two hours naked and there's a, a you know some anxiety and discomfort <laughs> it's not some but something that that you know i would want to do like now nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and people do it and what's, what's, um, what's amazing is that they, it's also fun. The fun part is the carnival aspect, which is you're seeing here. A lot of people have painted. And um, so, oh, uh, bicycling by the numbers. Um, so this is, this is a reflection. So there is a, a, a relationship between the success of the bike ride and the fact that among the largest cities in the country, Philadelphia is actually has a lead in terms of number of, uh, of people who commute to work by bicycle. So 2.11%, which is more than the next largest city, uh, Chicago. Um, and there, if you look at the, uh, at the, um, at the region, you'll notice there is a, a bunch, a few, a few counties, Chester, um, Camden and uh, uh, it was uh, yeah uh, Delaware County as well. I have, uh, this is a, this is over ten years. This is uh, the period from 2000 to 2009, and so there there's significant growth in the use of bicycles to commute to work. And mind you, um, 2.1 percent. Uh, the Netherlands the rate uh, is 20 over 20 percent of people commute to work by bicycle. So, how does this relate to me? 
Um, how does this relate to me? Um, it's, it's, well, so there's a, the, what's interesting is in the, back, in the naked background, it's actually the, the crossing over social norms. And in the naked background, there's two things happening. You're not in the car. The social norm in this country is the car. What most high school students want to do when they are a junior, Caesar, is a senior, is what? Get a car. Why? Because, uh, well, uh, independence from mom and dad, uh, being able to go as, and come as I want, um, have, get, I get the, attract, the attention of the opposite sex, or the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Multiple reasons. So that's a social norm. And, and crossing your social norm is actually something very hard to do for humans. It's very hard to do. That most people actually, a lot of people experience uh, physical symptoms when they, when they do this. So making it fun, making it fun is that. How do you make it fun? Because we need to leave behind social norm which are created in the age of cheap, uh, cheap energy. And establish different ones. And that's the challenge, one of the challenges. Um, so for you, so what does it mean? So it means like, how can I have my cake? Does it help? I, I, I won't need to have some independence from mom and dad, after all, yeah. <laughs> and so how can I have my cake? I need to too. So how can I have my independence, not tie myself to a habit which will cost you five three thousand bucks a year, mind you, and have fun and be with my friends. So that's a challenge that that you can collectively you know, be creative about. Um, the second example is uh, local food and urban farms. Um, so this was that's a picture which is very recent. It's taken uh, at the beginning of the month. This was the first local f um, food and farm fest ever organized in Philadelphia. It was a success. If you look at the picture, this is crowded. It never, it never, no, n n never happened. No, this event never happened before. And this event brought together consumers and uh, local farmers and producers of, lo of local specialty food. All of this of course, organic. And people had fun because they had free samples. They had some swag. They, were, they, they got some learning. Uh, uh, there were a bunch of workshops. And um, they met other people. And um, so, uh, so that's, that's you know, another, another, another thread between both is community. So there is, in Philadelphia, there is actually a very strong urban farmers community. And same thing on the bicycling side. Uh, the, the people are committed to bicycling in Philadelphia, uh, and not just in Philadelphia. It's, it's a community. So, oh, this is um, this is a short film, a uh, short video. So, uh, Elisa and Nick actually they're getting married today. Today, now. They, they, they own a urban farm in Kensington. Kensington, as you may know, is one of, you know, it's a drug supply neighborhood of Philadelphia. And um, they, have, they, they have five, uh, five plots that they transform into an urban farm. And part of it, the, what you're seeing right here is actually a community garden that is part of the farm is is that other that some of the neighbors have planted their own plants and, and cultivate them. And for them, it's not just about generating locally grown food, which is fresh and, and they can eat, but it's also uh, bringing together the neighbors, having the kids come there and open up. Mm -hmm. um, so we not oh, so we're not, I'm not going to stay with, uh, with the, the, the full time with the video. Um, it's on, on YouTube. You can see it yourself. So see, these are, this is a partial list of the, the urban farms in Philadelphia. There seems to be two to four additional urban farms every year. 
And uh, so the, very, the one on the very top is actually the very first one which was created in 1997. Um, and the, the, the one at the bottom is actually, uh, there's a, a, a chain of, uh, of grills restaurant in Philadelphia, a local chain called Marathon Grill. And that's a farm that they opened up to supply their own restaurant. Um, and I could comment on pretty much um, all of them, but I'm not going to. Emerald Street is the one that Nick and Elise are, are working. So what's interesting is this, is the multiplier. This explains why year to year there's more and more and more urban farms in Philadelphia. Um, it's uh, the fact that um, you have all these or organizations or programs actually multiply, multiple, you know, plant every year other plots and, and support the work of the of the urban farmers. Um, I want to add to uh, to highlight a few. Uh, Philly Orchard uh, started in 2007. The idea of Philly Orchard is to plant fruit trees and berries on vacant plots with the support of the local community. Most of the time, it's uh, it's places that you wouldn't go to on your own. Actually, I would suggest you don't go there on your own. <laughs> um, and, and it's places which have, the, the, the people who live there have no access to, or very little access to fresh fruit. That's what this does. Um, and, and they commit to, to maintaining the, the orchard. Uh, so the Seoul High School for Agricultural Science, this is pretty amazing. I didn't know that. The Seoul High School of Agricultural Science is the largest agricultural high school in the country. So you hear all the time that um, you know the, that the, the graduation rate for Philadelphia High School students is I don't know forty some percent, some ridiculous thing. At Seoul High School, the graduation rate is ninety five percent. So and it's the same kind of kids who go to the other. So they are, they're doing something different, somehow it works. So this is a place which has, it's a full farm. Um, another one, um, Occupy Vacant Land. Oh, we can, occupy, you have heard of Occupy? And, um, uh, and, and uh, so that's, they, they basically clean up uh, land. So uh, what can you learn from this is have fun, keep open to conversation, Train, learn, educate, walk your talk. Do what you said. Don't just talk about it. And create real wealth by building communities. Um, my, my part in this is I, I moved, uh, the, the, I redesigned the, the website from, from um, a blog to now it's, uh, it's a social networking hub and information sharing hub on sustainability for the greater Philadelphia area. That's what uh, Philly Eco City is. It's totally free. And my vision is to build this in the top 200 metropolitan area of the country. Thank you.